The new Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, a cantilever bed slinging 180 millimeter cube build volume 3D printer paired with a brand new AMS light, all for the low, low cost of $459 US. Thank you. That's it. Hey, good luck. Good night. See you guys. Oh, you're still here. You want more? Let's do this. The A1 Mini, a bed slinging 3D printer from a company who famously said, no more bed slingers. Paired with the new AMS light, a less complicated, and in my eyes, better approach at doing multicolor 3D printing. This clear one over here is a prototype. There were a dozen or so made and sent out to people and creators around the world, me included. This white one is the retail Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and the one that you can pre-order right now. And I'm gonna tell you about it. First up, it's a, it's really a bed slinger. What? It's a cantilever design and this is not a new design. Many 3D printers have had this design and in a cantilever design, X is constrained just on one side. You've got linear rails on X and on Z or Z, and on Y, you've got a linear bearing. Up front is a full color touchscreen. The power cord is attached and it's not very long. You are gonna have to put this right near an outlet or get yourself an extension cord. Maybe it'll make a startup noise. In typical Bamboo Lab fashion, it was packaged really well and getting it out of the box was very, very easy. Both of these machines were packaged similarly, if not exactly the same. It was stiff foam around the important parts and a plastic bag holding it all. Essentially, I had a bag of 3D printer. Once you have it exhumed from the foam and plastic bag, you're gonna have to remove this shipping bracket. Installing the poop flinger, yeah, that's what I'm calling it, poop flinger. That's cute. It only takes one screw. A spool holder can be installed on the back. The AMS light has a stand. And to attach it to that stand, it just takes four screws. The spool rollers themselves snap into place. Now look, they are sort of spring loaded in a certain direction. There are four PTFE tubes coming from the AMS light going to the adapter. Finally, a solitary cable connects the AMS light to the A1 Mini. The print head the filament cutter and the way it handles poop have all changed and look a little bit different. The print head now has a tension arm. The filament cutter has moved to the right side of the print head and this injection molded feature right here is what presses it. In order to prime and fling that poop, first the print head has to move all the way over. This moves the spring loaded poop pusher to the right of the nozzle. The priming of the nozzle happens and the poop is created. The print head moves right really quickly. This makes the spring-loaded poop pusher push the poop to the left. Honestly, a filament box works great for collecting all the poop from this machine. Beautiful. The AMS light has taken a different direction for spool management and printing. Rather than rolling spools on their edges, the center hole is used and spools are friction fit to each of the spool rollers. Each roller is paired to a specific number on the drive system. Inserting filament is pretty darn easy and it can detect it and advance the filament for you. Cardboard spools are no longer a problem. Yes, 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 yes. Now that it is using that center hole of a spool, it has to exist in this Goldilocks zone of not being too big, but not being too small. These four PTFE tubes connect all the way to this four-way splitter on top of the print head. In this system from Bamboo Lab, filament retraction really just has to be retracted above here. And also what's great, this is on a spring system and this spring can be overcome during extrusion and anytime a retraction move has to be done while printing, the spring can bounce up and handle that retraction rather than having to reverse filament through the entire system. Once you've got everything out of the box, foam removed, zip ties cut, things put together and assembled, it's time for the first power up and this is when the calibration happens. 
it's telling you it's going to do vibration compensation and motor noise cancellation. Let's do motor noise cancellation first. During this calibration series, the print head moves in certain directions at certain speeds. Then it turns on the noise cancellation algorithm and does those moves again. It does this for slower speeds and it does this for the higher speeds. It mostly works. It's not loud to begin with and the difference wasn't really apparent to me and my ears. When I was doing the testing, I held my lav microphone right near the 3D printer and when listening back to that, I really couldn't detect too much of a difference and so your mileage may vary. Now we talk about vibration compensation, which is probably known better as input shaping. X and Y axes are moved back and forth at varying frequencies. And doing these tests allows the A1 Mini to compute acceleration values and how fast it has to move and decelerate for the highest print quality. How does it print? Well, like fast, like really, really ridiculously fast. Like that Benji right there. And when it printed, it was fast. Look at it go. Go little Benji, you got this. Printing can also happen at more normal speeds. There's no restrictions on that. Single color and multiple colors are the options, of course. You can also choose to print without a purge tower and just rely on the purge and the poop flinging. And that worked for me too. And as far as the print quality, it's there. And it's what we've come to expect from Bamboo Lab 3D printers. The AMS Lite works incredibly well and handled every spool that I threw at it. The A1 Mini itself, when printing really fast, does tend to migrate across the surface. So just make sure you don't have it on any edge because I'd hate for it to fall over and go boom, boom. If you were to get one of these, Bamboo Lab is including a surprise gift with each A1 Mini. You've got a lamp kit, uh, a, a mouse kit, wireless mouse kit, a marble run kit, and an engine model kit. I have the mouse kit and I do have the lamp kit. Each of the boxes for these mystery surprise gifts contain the non-printable parts for putting together the thing that's on it. The box also contains a QR code and you scan that with the Bamboo Handy app on your mobile device. And once you've scanned it, it takes you to that model's page on Maker World. From there, you're given a button, prepare to print, and then you can choose any of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers that you have connected to your account. And here, this is new. I, I just found this out and I verified it with Bamboo Lab. They slice the file in the Bamboo Lab cloud. I inquired a little bit more about this and they said it's Bamboo Studio. It's Bamboo Studio in the cloud doing the slicing. Then the cloud does send that sliced file to the chosen Bamboo Lab 3D printer and then the print starts. And after the prints are done, some are multiple plates, you then assemble it. The mouse didn't work out, unfortunately. I was printing it in High 5 Blue and it was going well. I mean, if you look at that, the model is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous until it's not. And that's unfortunate. However, I also have the lamp kit. Right here, there's a really cool video playing of Future Joel putting together the lamp kit and turning it on and just admiring its beauty. Oh, look at that, look at that. Good job, Joel. So at the end of the day, this is a killer machine. It's a killer machine with a great multi-material model that's easy to use and priced aggressively. I say aggressively because at the time of filming, the price of the A1 Mini Combo, 459 US dollars, is exactly the same as the Prusa Mini Plus semi-assembled 3D printer on the Prusa website. Bamboo Lab knows exactly who they're going for with this 3D printer and anyone else producing a cantilever designed machine with this build volume should be scared. 
If you just want the A1 Mini without the AMS light, that's $299 USD. If you want the AMS light but not the A1 Mini, that's $249 USD. But buying them as a combo is $459 USD, which saves you $89 which really, at that point, gives you money to buy filament for the AMS light, which you're gonna use your A1 Mini to print with. The next lowest cost 3D printer from Bamboo Lab at time of filming is the P1P with no AMS, and that is permanently price reduced to $599. That's a $140 difference between these machines, and that seems razor thin-ish until you consider something. I'm listening. To accurately compare the P1P to the A1 Mini price-wise, you have to add on the AMS unit for the P1P, which is $349 US. That brings its total to $948 US. And if you have $948 to spend, you could actually buy two A1 Mini combos, the A1 Mini and the AMS Lite. You could buy two of those and have $30 left over to buy a spool or two of material. Hmm. I have found that my prototype A1 Mini actually performs better. It looks better, but it also performs better. My, my attempt of the mouse here on my retail A1 Mini failed and there was spaghetti everywhere. And it turns out it can't detect any of that because it doesn't think the camera is installed. Whoa, breaking news! Well, actually, there a lot has happened since the original filming of this episode, and I want to give you an update because look at here's the friggin' mouse. It completed. Here's how it went. I was having all sorts of issues. I emailed Bamboo. They said others with this machine were having the same issues. Joel, can we send you the model? And if you can get it to work, can you send us the print file? And I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So here's what I changed, and this is just good information to have. I added a 10 millimeter brim and I changed the Z-Hop to one millimeter. The thinking being there's a lot here and if a nozzle contacts it, it might fall over. And so with that brim and that extra Z-Hop to get to places, it completed beautifully. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It works. It absolutely works and I love it. And this model's fantastic. And now right back to it. Okay, no machine is perfect. And for this, I, I just reach out to Bamboo Lab and talk to customer service. They'll either tell me what needs to be fixed or send me to a wiki that shows me how to do it is my guess. This is kind of interesting to think about because Bamboo Lab is not open source. So I can't go to my spare parts bin to pick out a part now to fix this thing. You know, I could take this apart and try to figure it out because that's what I'm gonna do, of course. Okay, if you think about it, if you're if your dishwasher, your microwave, your garage door opener, your clothes dryer, those appliances within your house, if any of those don't work, if you're under warranty, you contact the manufacturer. And if you're out of warranty, you contact a repair shop. Appliances typically aren't consumer repair friendly. Oh sure, people can and do repair their appliances. In fact, there's this crazy website called YouTube where you can go look up your appliance and a problem with it. And you'll probably find 10 different creators showing you the wrong and right ways to do things. And that's where I truly believe Bamboo Lab is going with the A1 Mini. The A1 Mini really feels more like an appliance than a a tool that I can tinker with. This is not a bad thing, not at all. We need this level of machine, of 3D printer, to be able to bring it to a more general audience. Obviously, maintaining and supporting open source is paramount, but also, so is bringing this hobby in a more affordable and easy to use way to more people. The A1 Mini may not be the large Bamboo Lab 3D printer that everybody on formerly Twitter and Facebook have called for, wished for, hoped for, prayed for. However, this is a really good offering. Listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the multicolor things. And as always, 
High five.